Hello and welcome to the Feminine as Fuck podcast. I'm your host, Monica Yates, a period and women's life coach, where I help women to harness the power of their period and connect back to their true superpowers. In these episodes, we'll be talking about all things periods, vaginas, hormones, women's health, sex, confidence, food, femininity, and all the stuff that goes through our heads. You will walk away from each episode with new nuggets and truth bombs, as I don't seem to have a filter and I love talking about all the shit that people are too afraid to say, but everyone is thinking. Ladies, I'm so excited to be back. So today's podcast is coming to you live from, actually, it's not my bed, it's my sister's bed. I'm staying in my family at the moment because as you guys would know, if you follow me on Instagram, I have had surgery on my leg. And today is a very fucking sore day. It is sore or or. So I'm needing to have my leg up. I have to work from bed or on the sofa, but I don't want to be downstairs because of noise with clients. So I'm doing all my clients' calls from bed today, which isn't ideal, but luckily my head is still really wide awake and open. It's literally just that I need my leg. Sorry, did I say my head on my leg? I don't know, but I need my leg to be up at all times. So it's not hurting so much. Anyway, I'm really excited about today's episode because I feel like it's been a long time coming. So many of you send me questions about this. I've been getting more and more questions in the past few days and I'm like, okay, hurry up Monica and get your fucking shit together so you can play this podcast. So today's podcast is drum roll, how to talk to doctors. So this is a really important topic because I mean, I am queen of boundaries, right? I am a boundary fucking bitch. I don't let anybody cross my boundaries. I get mistaken for a bitch, but actually I just have boundaries. And that's a really important thing I always tell my clients. It's like having boundaries is not the same thing as being a bitch. Anyway, that's a total side note. That's coaching stuff. Today we're talking about periods. Um, so yeah, I have boundaries, right? And like I stand in my power. I speak my truth. I've got no problem with confrontation. But what is it about doctors? They just make you feel, this is generally speaking, make you feel so small when you try and question them or when you ask about your health or when you ask for a certain blood test. They just like will will do anything to get you out of having the blood test. And like even my last blood test has happened and I literally had to stay in the office and go, yep, cool. So we're going to get the blood test done. Yep. I'm still getting the blood test done. It's my blood. It's my body. I'm getting the blood test done. And I was, I actually said to her, I was like, look, if you don't give me the blood test, I'm going to go to somewhere else. So you might as well just fucking save time for us all and give you the bloody blood test. And so she gave it to me, but I just want to like give you all permission to fight and to stand your power and to stand there because the bottom line is, and this is what I've heard, is that the reason why doctors don't want to give you blood tests is like because of like Medicare and it costs Medicare money or like time or something like that. Um, so this is Medicare, which is our Australian like health insurance stuff, health system, I don't know, whatever the fuck it is. Um, you can tell that I'm not very, I don't have a lot of com- common knowledge. I actually said to my mom yesterday, I was like, cause she was like, Monica, have you ever done a booper claim? And I was like, no. And she was like, have you done a Med- Medicare claim? And I was like, nope. And she was just like, okay, we need to teach you how to do this. And I'm like, I said to her, I was like, someone needs to create a course on doing life on like adulting. Because no one teaches you this shit at school and I need to know how to make a fucking health, what's it called? Health insurance claim. Anyway, so what was I saying? Um, yeah, so I don't know, something about like it costs the doctors or like a health insurance people in Australia money and so they don't want to give us the blood test. That's a butt fucking excuse. I don't bloody know what it is, but it's dumb, right? Like it's your blood. It's my blood. It's our body. It's your body. If you want your fucking blood taken out, you have every right to get your bloody blood taken out because at the end of the day, you're paying for it, right? Like even if Medicare is paying for it, you're paying for Medicare. So like you're fucking paying for it. Um, and like one time I went to, this is after my first surgery. Oh no, it was after my second surgery on my leg. And, um, and I, went to go get a blood test in my thyroid because I knew it was off. I knew intuitively it was off, but I just wanted to get the numbers so I could like compare down the track. And it was a fucking uphill battle for them to test my thyroid. Apparently your thyroid has to have been so bad that they give you thyroid medication. And let's just also note that the THS scale, well, THS isn't actually telling you that much about how your thyroid's doing. It's telling you what your brain thinks your thyroid's doing, but the two can be different. So, um, On the thyroid like scale, they include everybody in that range that um, have a good thyroid, an underactive thyroid, and an overactive thyroid. So basically, the range is 
so much bigger than it actually should be. So in order for you to get thyroid medication, you basically have had to have a fucking horrendous thyroid before the medication's hand over, handed over. And then to even get a, thi- a proper thyroid panel down, when I'm saying a proper thyroid panel, I mean total T3, total T4, free T3, free, t- free T4, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, any, t- um, any TPO, um, thyroid antibodies, all that jazz. Um, you have to be on thyroid medication in order to get that. And I'm like, where the fuck is the whole preventative healthcare system thing? You know, and like in my uni degree, when we're talking about preventative healthcare for nutrition, it's it's all like we do preventative healthcare. I'm like, I don't know where the fuck you've gotten your ideas from, but in Australia, there is no preventative healthcare. It's like, uh, oh, oh, actually, no, I tell a lie, right? When I had the abscess in my leg, that hole, they wanted to put me on antibiotics as a quote unquote preventative, but let's just like unpack that for a second. So I can see why they're wanting to put me on something that's preventing an infection, but is antibiotics actually going to prevent an infection? No, because it's going to fuck your th- fuck your immune system, fuck your gut health, which is going to make you more susceptible to actually getting an infection. So no, that's not, that's not preventative. Anyway, um, well, in my eyes anyway, and just like thinking logically in terms of like common sense. Um, so yeah. And then even when I went to get my thyroid panel done and I picked up the test, they hadn't even run, they hadn't even run the reverse T3, reverse T4 and stuff that I'd asked them to do. And I was paying the extra for those tests. They hadn't run them and I picked them up and I was like, where am I like other thyroid tests? Oh, like you're not on thyroid medication. So we didn't run them. And I said to her, I was like, I asked specifically for them to be run and I've already paid for them. So can you please phone the lab and get them sent down? And like 10 minutes later, I had them in my lap, right? It's just people being so effing lazy. This is obviously a generalization because hashtag haters, um, as in like people are going to like send me hate mail, but like whatever. This is a generalization. We all fucking know that. And I over-exaggerate sometimes. We also all fucking know that. But point being is stand in your fucking power and go in knowing what you need, okay? So go in knowing what you're asking for and do not leave until you have gotten what you have asked for. And it's really good to have clarity around what you actually need. So whether that's going to a coach and asking, whether that's going to your GP, whether that's going to a naturopath or a nutritionist um, or whatever you need or, or acupuncturist, whatever, um, make sure that you go to somebody beforehand so you have clarity and know actually what you want. Um, obviously it's also really important that you keep your cool. So when you go in to get your test done, you want to make sure that you are not getting, um, getting stressed out or getting worried or getting, um, or teary and stuff, because the bottom line is that's not really going to help. That's just giving away your power, right? That means the doctor has gotten to you, which, oh, the doctor's going to absolutely love, but, um, you're not going to love it. So also make sure that you don't like get a tacky because when you start attacking and like getting defensive and like dogmatic, it's because your ego is getting in the way. Like we don't need ego here. We need soul alignment. Soul alignment wants you to get your hormones tested. So therefore we are speaking from soul alignment. And when your doctor says, no, like your estrogen seems to be fine. You don't need, you don't need to get, oh, this is what I said to me one time. They were like, your hormones were in range last time. So why are you getting another one? And I was like, okay, well they might be in range. And this is legit me. Look, they might be in range according to the test, but those ranges um, are really big and they actually should be a little bit smaller. So yes, they might have been in range for you, but I would just like to get them tested again to make sure that that, 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 that they are still in range. Um, like, hello, that's pretty fair enough, right? Like, and well, why do you need to make sure they're still in range? Well, I've had a lot of stress lately. My hormones have been out of whack. So I just want to get my hormones done. So I have the, the numbers and I can see what's happening. Okay. Well, give me some symptoms like blah, blah, blah. Like, and I'm like, look, I just need, and I literally don't get angry. I'm just like, I'm a period coach. I know that my hormones are out of whack. I know the exact tests I need. Can I please get them done? And the bottom line is like, if you're going to sit there and keep being like cool, calm and collected and be like, okay, I hear what you're saying. However, this is what I'm saying. And don't leave the office until you've gotten it. They're basically going to have no, no choice but to give it to you, right? So 
That's basically the best way to handle it. Because if you go in there attacking, getting angry and screaming at them, like not only have you made yourself angry and you have just gotten yourself, like basically you've just not helped your hormones at all because your adrenals are now firing and you're releasing cortisol, but also you've given away, given away your power to them and they feel like they have gotten to you. Um, so we do not want that. Um, so make sure that you also say what they want to hear. Um, so when you're in like a confrontational situation with somebody, like make sure you say, look, I totally get that. You're probably thinking, why does she need a hormones done? Um, however, I just have been through a lot and I want to just monitor them so that if anything does go a little bit astray, I can rectify it before it gets really bad. And I'm sure that you can understand that I'm just trying to take really good preventative health, preventative care of my health. And just kind of almost say it in like a little bit of a, not cocky way, but a little bit of like a goody two shoes, like, you know, you actually can't really say anything against me because I'm, I'm little Miss Perfect sort of way. Um, that's basically the best way to go about it. Like when I'm in an argument, I don't fight back. I'm just like, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, I'm just seeing a little bit differently. And it's almost like you're cracking a joke about the whole thing, like, you, it's almost like you are on the verge of laughing because what they're saying, what the other person is saying is so egotistical and so fucking stupid. So I know that going into your doctors can be really daunting. Um, and I know that for numerous times, you guys have sent me some horrendous messages uh, about Dr. Horror Stories. And obviously I had my podcast, but then since then I've gotten even more messages about like my marina being stuck, the the gyno not taking it out or like telling me I have to wait three weeks. And that if I, you know, you know, other people saying like the, the gyno won't let me come off my, the pill, the marina, cause then she says that I'll be in bed rest and I'll die. And I'm like, what the fuck? Who says this shit? Anyway, so I know that you can be made to feel dumb, worthless, stupid, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and being told that your hormones are normal, but the bottom line is you don't want your hormones to be common Okay. And a lot of people think that normal is common. No, no, no. You don't. It's like saying that bloating is normal. Bloating is not normal. Bloating is common. So you don't want to be normal ladies. We don't want to be normal. Okay. We want our hormones to be bloody fucking amazing or as close to perfect as possible. That is what we want. Um, so, and like, and our hormones are measured in parts per trillion, right? So micro fucking scopic, so if they are the tiniest bit out of whack, we are going to feel it, right? So we want our bloods to be amazing, not just common. Um, and remember that the, the ranges are very broad and they include everybody in the population. So those people that have shit hormones as well as really good hormones, you it doesn't mean that being in the range and where you are in the range is optimal. It's just that it's common. Um, and doctors are trained in school, they do like fucking like one or two lectures about the reproductive system or something. Um, they are trained on how to counsel you for the quote unquote most effective hormonal birth control for your symptoms. So don't be alarmed if they try and put you on the pill or they put, try and put you on the IUD to quote unquote fix your problem. As I said numerous times, hormonal birth control does not fix anything. It shuts your system down and you'll have to deal with the real problem and often 50 times worse in the future. So we want to fix this now and not put a band-aid over it. Um, also, if you do- the doctor asks you what contraceptive method are you using, um, if you say fertility awareness method, they uh, there's a quite a high chance that they will be like, oh my God, that doesn't work. You're going to fall pregnant because they think it's the rhythm method. The rhythm method is nowhere. It's, it's fucking don't use the rhythm method. It's very inaccurate. Um, and it's not like the fertility awareness method. So don't the rhythm, the rhythm method is basically, um, in a nutshell, um, is saying that everybody ovulates on day 14 and that everyone's cycle is 28 days. But the problem is that not everybody ovulates on day 14. So if you think that you've ovulated on day 14, but you've ovulated on day 18, you could fall pregnant. Um, fertility awareness method is about charting those three symptoms, cervical position, cervical fluid, and temperature. Uh, and you actually don't need to use all of them, um, to know where you are in your cycle and to know when you're ovulating. Um, so I'm going to go through with some of the things that you want to make sure that you're actually asking for. This is generally speaking for a general hormone test. Um, and please be aware that THS really doesn't tell you that much about your hormones. Um, so, and I actually have a blog post on this that I'm going to link below. So for your estrogen, 
Um, you want to make sure that you are getting your estrogen, your estradiol tested, your um, progesterone tested, your FHS and your LH. You want to get for, and this is for like late or irregular periods and just general period issues. You can get your DHEAs tested. You can get your adrenals tested. So doing a, co- a morning cortisol um, blood test is really good. You can also do saliva tests, which are really, really accurate. Um, you also want to get your sex hormone binding globulin tested. You want to get your total and free testosterone tested for your thorm- for your hormone. That's good. For your thyroid panel, you want to get THS, total T4, total T3, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, anti-TPO, anti-thyroid globulin antibodies. Um, and then for your estrogen and your FHS and your LH, get that done on day three of your cycle. And for progesterone, you want it to be done on day between days um, 19 to 22 of your cycle after ovulation. So if you ovulate late, get it done after ovulation. I hope that makes sense. Um, so for your DHEAs, the optimal range, and I've got this all in the blog post, um, the optimal range is top half or the normal range between 200 to 380. For your cortisol serum, optimal range is 275 to 413. Um, and I'm going to just list these all on the thing because these numbers are going to be just going through your head. So I'm just going to put the link in the description below. And I've got the amounts that you want to actually be having in the different um, hormones that you're getting tested. Um, so also make sure that your if you're getting tested for PCOS, your insulin resistance cannot be diagnosed by a glucose, glucose test. It needs to be diagnosed by a fasting insulin or a glucose tolerance test with insulin. Write that shit down. Make sure that you ask about whether you have elevated testosterone or another elevated androgen um, like DHEAs um, for, for PCOS. Make sure that... Um, that your iron has also been tested for heavy bleeding. So what is your actual ferritin reading? Um, it should be greater than 50 nanograms per milliliter. Um, the bleed, the pill bleed, I've said this a million times, sort of real bleed. So don't fall into the trap of like, um, oh, by the way, you don't need it. You shouldn't get your, any of your hormones tested when you're on the pill because they're obviously going to be way inaccurate. Um, side note, if the doctor says that the pill helps with bone health, Research is research is actually showing that it doesn't help with bone health. If you have low estrogen and you're not getting a period, um, the best thing to get to boost your low estrogen, your low estradiol, is actually orgasms. So side note with that. Um, so make sure that you are having orgasms if you want to boost your estradiol. And estradiol is the good form of estrogen, the healthy form of estrogen that you want to be having in your body. Um, what else should I mention about doctors? I feel like that's a pretty good sum up. Um, do not forget ladies that you want to stand in your power, know in knowing what, go in knowing what you need, have clarity about what you need, keep your cool, say what you want to hear. Doctors can be dicks and you have full permission to stand your ground and get your fucking blood done. Even if it means you need to pay or you will have to pay in Australia for that extra thyroid panel for all of those extra ones. Ladies, if you know that your thy- that your thyroid's off, that your hormones are not okay, then it is worth paying a hundred bucks to know what the f is going on because your THS is just not going to tell you enough. Ha! <sighs> okay, I hope that was helpful, ladies. I hope you got some crispy chicken nuggets out of that. Um, as usual, send me through any DMs, any questions um, through Instagram. Um, make sure that you are following me on Instagram and also, um, feel free to add me on Facebook. I'm going to be doing lots more Facebook lives, um, because they actually stay on and it's more productive than me having to upload them onto YouTube all the time. Um, just cause that takes a while and I have to organize thumbnails and blah, blah, blah. So I'll occasionally do that for really juicy ones that I want to enable other people to find. But, um, yeah, make sure that you are following me on Facebook. You can just add my personal profile. It's Monica Yates. Um, as long as you're not a crazy person, I will accept your request. And then you can join us for Q&As and whatnot and ask all your juicy questions. I'm going to be trying to do like online workshoppy things um, once a month. So make sure that you are on my mailing list so that you know when they are out. Um, and that will give you the chance to have like a hot seat coaching with me. And they'll be... Um, you know, either free or really, really low, low investment, um, just because I want to be able to allow as many of you as possible to get access to me. So 
Have an incredible rest of your day and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Well, thank you again for tuning in and listening to my podcast. I hope that you got lots of nuggets out of today's show. Uh, Please, 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 I would be really grateful if you could leave me a review so that more women can find the podcast and therefore I can help more women understand their period and fix their period problems. Because after all, it's a much nicer life to live when we actually love our cycle because we do have to um, keep up with it every single month. Also, if you have any friends or loved ones that you think will enjoy my podcast, I'd be super grateful if you could send it to them as well just to share the love. And that's it for now. So I will catch you on the flip side. Have an amazing day or night wherever you are.